One of the more exciting techniques to come along in rendering in recent years is the idea of rendering each light out to a separate file, or maybe render groups of lights out to separate files. And then we can take those separate files and add them together in a compositing or post-production application. And that'll give us the ability to adjust the balance of the lighting in post. We do that in the Arnold renderer through AOVs, or arbitrary output variables. I've got a simple scene here with a key light and a fill light. We need to define light groups for each one of those so that we can then output those light groups to arbitrary output variables, or AOVs. So let's open up the Light Explorer, go to Tools, All Global Explorers, Light Explorer. Select the Fill Light, go over to the Modify panel. Scroll down to the very bottom, and there's an AOV rollout. And here's where you put in the Light Group. And I'm going to make this fill underscore light, F-I-L-L -L underscore L-I-G-H-T, and press tab. And that actually enters. If you're wondering why I'm using an underscore, it's so that when the AOV documents get saved out, those files do not have any white spaces in their file names. Let's do the same for the key light. Put it in a light group. Select the key. In the Modify panel, select the Arnold Light primitive, scroll down to the bottom, and enter in the light group, which is going to be key underscore light, and press tab. So we've got our light groups. Arnold allows up to 16 different light groups, and each one of those groups can have an unlimited number of lights in it. Let's close the Light Explorer, and now we're ready to set up our AOVs and that'll be in the Render Setup dialog. In order to save out AOVs, we also have to save out a beauty pass, which is the standard rendering. So in the Common tab, scroll down a bit to the Render Output section and click Files. And in the Current Projects Render Output folder, let's make a subfolder to keep these files separate from any other documents. Click to create a new folder and I'll call it AOV Light Groups. Then go into that folder, and the file name for our beauty pass will also be AOV Light Groups. For the file format, let's choose Open EXR because that is a floating point format with high dynamic range. Click Save, and we get the Open EXR configuration dialog. We can just take the defaults here. We'll save out to a half float or half precision file to save a little bit of disk space. And the type will be red, green, blue, alpha, and compression is zip. Click OK. And now the save file switch is turned on, and we've defined a file path and a file name for the beauty pass. Let's now go over to the AOVs tab. And we need to define two custom AOV names. Once we've done that, we can then define two AOV output files. And it's a little bit confusing because this button is labeled Add AOV File, but we're not actually adding a file yet. We're just adding a name inside of 3ds Max. So click Add AOV File, even though that's a misnomer. And then down here, we have a field where we can enter a custom AOV name. And things get a little bit tricky and a little bit weird here now because once you've added that custom AOV name, you can never remove it and you can never rename it. There's no mechanism for that. So whatever you do, don't make a mistake because if you create an AOV with the wrong name, it will just be there in your scene forever. So kind of an annoyance. The other thing, even weirder, but also way more important, is that for the light groups to work at all, you have to put a very special magical prefix at the beginning of your AOV name. And this is not documented in the Arnold plugin documentation for 3ds Max. And the only way I knew this is because I had previously done it in Maya. So you need to enter this very special string at the beginning of your AOV name for the light group. And that is capital R, capital G, capital B, capital A, and underscore. 
That's the prefix you need. And after that, you want to type in your AOV name, exactly. K-E-Y underscore L-I-G-H-T. We want to disable add AOVs to single file. We want each one of these AOVs to be a separate EXR document. So turn that off. And then once you're sure that you have exactly what you want, you can click add to list. And now you've got a custom AOV name. We need another one for the fill light. Once again, capital R, capital G, capital B, capital A underscore F-I-L-L underscore L-I-G-H-T and click add to list. So we've got the AOVs defined. Now we need to actually create the file output. So select both of those. Hold down control and select those and then click the add button down here. Now the interface changes and what we see is we're saving out two EXR documents and they have these parameters. The name of this one is RGBA key light and the data type is RGBA. So select the top level there, EXR, and just to save a little disk space, we can enable half precision and that'll match the half float format for the beauty pass. Same thing for the fill light, we can enable half precision. That's all set up now and we can go ahead and click the render button and we'll see the beauty pass drawing in our rendered frame window. We won't see the AOVs. We'll have to wait till this is finished rendering and then we can check whether those AOVs have been saved out correctly in our render output folder. So let's give this a moment to render. Once that rendering has completed, we can check in on our AOV output. I'll minimize 3ds Max and here is the render output folder and inside AOV like groups, we indeed have three documents, the beauty pass, the fill light, and the key light. Let's load those into Photoshop so we can stack these together. I've got Photoshop already open. Go to the file menu, scripts, load files into stack. In the load layers dialog, click browse. And we need to navigate in this case, it's going to be on my desktop and exercise files, render output, AOV light groups, hold down shift and select all three of those and click OK. We don't want to align them. We don't want to make smart objects. We just want to click OK. It takes a moment while that script runs and now we've got three layers in an untitled Photoshop document. The top layer happens to be the beauty pass. Let me double click on that and rename it just beauty so that we can keep it distinguished from the fill and key. I'll disable the visibility of the beauty pass and here we're seeing the fill light only. So that's the next layer in the stack. I can disable visibility for the fill light and now we're seeing the key light only. Notice that the color and the contrast of these AOVs is different from what we see in the beauty pass and that's due to the exposure control settings in 3ds Max. Exposure control is applied to the beauty pass only and not to the AOVs because it's assumed that you're going to save the AOVs out to a high dynamic range format such as EXR and then color grade them in post. Cool, so all that remains to be done is to add these two lights together. I'll re-enable visibility for the fill light, select that fill light layer, and in the blending modes up here, instead of normal, we want to choose linear dodge, add. And now we are literally adding the two lights together. And we can disable visibility for the fill light and see what that looks like. So here's the key light only, and here's the key light plus the fill. We can also adjust opacity, for example, we can dim that fill light down to whatever intensity we want. We could add an exposure adjustment layer to increase the brightness of the fill light. If you do increase the brightness of a layer, you may notice a lot of grain. And if that happens to you, I recommend rendering out the lights at a higher intensity than you actually want in your final composite. Because if you dim down the light, you'll also be removing grain. 
Whereas if you increase the intensity of the light, you may experience some grain issues. And that is how to use light groups with Arnold arbitrary output variables.